Well, I have a confession to make. I had an offer of $160,000, out of which most of it were fixed as a data engineer in a startup. But I rejected that to join Google. Now, before I talk about anything else, if you are watching this video from US or UK or any such countries, you might think $160,000 is actually not that big of a deal. It's pretty common for software engineers or senior software engineers to get that kind of money. But let me tell you what the significance of this amount is in India. Because when you convert that amount into Indian rupees, that turns out to be around 30 million INR or 1.3 crore in our units. Now these are photos of my apartment where I live and the surrounding area. In terms of dollars, I only pay $300 per month. So to get over $12,000, $13,000 a month in India is a huge deal because if you're a bachelor and if you live an extravagant lifestyle, then also you're not going to spend more than $1,000 a month. And do you know how much does it take to be in the top 1% earners in India? Annually about 60 lakhs, which is 6 million Indian rupees. And I was going to earn double that amount. Now, before I talk about why did I reject this offer, I'm going to tell you about how did I get it? Because I obviously had my personal and professional reasons of not accepting this, but there are many folks who would like to get this kind of an offer living in India. Then I'm going to tell you about what exactly was the offer. Obviously, I'm not going to mention the company name because I don't want this video to be reported or to be taken down. After that, I'm going to mention why did I reject this offer? In fact, I have a perfect list of reasons why I did that right here. I understand my handwriting is super bad. So I have taken it all down in a spreadsheet that I'm going to share uh, on this video with you all. I would just like to highlight that believe it or not, this was one of the best decisions I've made so far. I love my work at Google and I love all the people here as well. And if you enjoy this video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel. So let's jump right in. Let me show you how did I get this offer. It was through LinkedIn. <laughs> like most of my offers, uh, even including how I was approached for my Google role was through LinkedIn and this offer was no different at all. One of the recruiters approached me on LinkedIn and this was the message that he sent me. He works closely with some leading organization of the world of Web3 and DeFi. And these organizations include, I have censored them because I don't want to share any information about the company because I was through this entire interview process. I had accepted this offer and then I had rejected it. I was feeling super bad about it because these guys were really, really good throughout the process. They were really supportive and they were super smart as well. And you can see that the title of this message is software engineer data. Now this is quite common job posting. Even if we talk about Microsoft, I was approached by one of the recruiters on LinkedIn and they also mentioned that the role is software engineer data. That essentially means data engineer. Why do I get a lot of these offers from LinkedIn? One, I have always had a super active LinkedIn profile. Since last couple of years, I've been posting on LinkedIn a lot. It started with posting once a month and then twice a month and then once or twice a week. And now I, I don't know how many times I post, sometimes three times a week or sometimes even five times a week. My point is that you don't really need to post that much on LinkedIn, but if you are a little bit active, let's say even if you post once a month or something, you are going to rank higher in all the searches that they make. For example, if they are searching for a data engineer and they apply some filters on the skills that you have added in your profile, there are 50 people, right, uh, who match that criteria. But if you've passed some LinkedIn assessment or you have an all-star profile, as LinkedIn like to say that you have filled all the sections of your profile. And if you have been posting a little frequently, then your rank is going to be higher on that search. And that's how you get approached by recruiters on LinkedIn. So coming back to the message, he's mentioning that uh, the basic salary range for these roles are between 180K to $250,000. He did mention that the cost of living is super low in India compared to US. So is there a room for negotiation? And from the very uh, first round, the screening round, I had mentioned that I still expect to get at least 100 to 120K fixed salary and closer it is to 120k it will be better for me to accept the offer straight up and as you saw that it's a web3 and DeFi, but yet my role was data engineer maybe you would have heard about coinbase right so coinbase is a centralized uh, trading platform but there's a central entity who governs everything that's happening on coinbase they control your wallet and your uh, the amount in your wallet in fact they had also mentioned in recent article that if they go bankrupt they are going to 
uh, freeze the wallet. So if you have some money, they are they can freeze that. These are one of the cons of uh, a centralized finance trading platform. But this was a decentralized finance where there's no a, where there's not central entity. All the transactions are being recorded in a blockchain, and entire website is also created on a Web3 environment. Even in such environment, they need to capture data and they need to process it. They need to identify user patterns or they need to identify ways that they can reward their best users and so on. So for that, they need data engineers. So demand of data engineers is not going away anytime soon in the future as well. So after this uh, message, I obviously replied to him and uh, then we had a connect. It was like a screening round of 30 to 45 minutes where he checked if I was a good fit for the company. And after that, I had a technical interview scheduled with one of the directors of the company because it's a startup, right? So even director level people are very much engaged in the interview process. And at that time, this was a series A funded company. They had more than $20 million in funding already. And overall, I don't think there were more than 10 to 20 people in the company. It was a great interview. Uh, it was a technical interview where he didn't really ask a lot of coding questions but he definitely asked a lot of questions on data modeling on system design creating a data engineering pipeline creating a machine learning model and so on so i really did well in that interview and it was actually longer than how you know traditional interviews are which are of 45 minutes it was definitely longer than that and after that he was really impressed with me and i also liked him because i was going to report to him i really need to actually like the person that i'm going to be reporting to after that we had a follow-up call and then he mentioned that great i've got the offer that is how i got this offer now let's talk about what was the actual offer for this we're going to look at the offer letter obviously i'm going to blur out the name of the company I'm just going to go to the important part in the offer letter. So you can say that the pay rate is $127,500 a year, uh, which is the fixed pay. And then they were going to give me some 28,000 number of shares, which was equivalent to $33,000 per year for four years. So that's how my annual salary turned out to be $160,000. Usually in a startup, they negotiate with multiple kinds of offers. One has a higher equity, and other has lower equity. So that's exactly what they did. They gave me three different types of offers. One side, I had lower equity, but higher base. Other side, I had higher equity, but lower base. And then there was the balanced middle offer. So I ended up going with the balanced one because I wanted maximum base, but I also wanted to have a shot at becoming ultra rich if the startup is successful. So that's what I did. Let me show you one more important part. If you're from India, you might not be used to this kind of clause in your offer letter. So you can see it's employment at will. So their employment with the company will be at will in accordance with the employment laws of the state of California, which means that either you or the company may terminate your employment with the company at any given time for any reason or for no reason at all with or without cause. Now This is an alarming statement, right? But let me tell you something. This is very common in US offers. And even companies like Google, Facebook and tech giants that we all hear about, they have this kind of clause in their offer letters. So if you're performing well and the company is doing well, they obviously don't have any reason to fire you. Why would they do that? But if something of opposite is happening, then your job might be at a risk. And because of this, there is also no notice period. So they can fire you like this day and from they can say from tomorrow, you don't have to come to work. Now, the bright side of this is that there is no notice period. Now, if you're watching this video from outside India, let me tell you something. In India, it's very common to have two to three months of notice period or sometimes even higher than that in senior positions, which is absolutely insane. Now, the benefit of this kind of clause is that you can tell them that from next week, I'm not going to come to work because I have another offer and you can directly move. So there are pros and cons of this, but this is a very common and general practice that's happening in US based offers. So this was the offer and the most attractive part was that I didn't have to move to US. I could work from anywhere. Now, next, I'm going to talk about why did I reject it? Pro was obviously money, which makes ton of sense. Then stocks, which is great. Then there was remote flexibility, which is work from anywhere. I could work from India. I could work from any other country in the world. I can just roam around, travel and also work at the same time. 
Another pro was there would be fast paced learning. This happens in most of the startups. You wear different hats. If you are hired for a data engineer position, that doesn't really mean that you're going to do data engineering type of work all the time. You might be working as a data scientist sometimes or as a data analyst or even as a software engineer. So the amount of learning that you get in a startup is insane. Plus you also get to learn those things like how to raise money, how to talk to venture capitalists when you are one of the first data engineers in a startup. In fact, I was going to be the first data engineer in the startup. <laughs> the next is smart people. All the people that I interacted with in this company, they were super smart from super good Ivy League colleges in US. Then another thing is you could be an important person if a startup grows. So as I mentioned, I was going to be the first data engineer in the startup. So imagine startup now growing from 20 people to 100 people. After some time, I might be promoted to like director of data or something at a very young age. More liberty to work on different models compared to a larger scale organization. Now cons are also not less. First one is less stability. Now this was one of the biggest reasons of me rejecting this offer. It was not just about general lower stability of a startup versus an organization, but it was also about macroeconomic situation that was happening in the world. And in fact, it's still happening. So as we know, crypto Bitcoin dropped from around $63,000 to even less than $20,000 in very short span. And that was the state with all the cryptocurrency. Let's not even talk about Terra Luna. So when cryptocurrencies usually take this type of a dive, first companies to be affected are crypto based startups, especially trading platforms. And that's exactly what we saw with Coinbase. So if something like that can happen to a company like Coinbase, which has which had a ton of funding before going public, then it can happen with anyone, right? Especially to a small scale startup who has to worry about competition and whatnot. Now, this is a pro tip before you join any startup in this kind of a situation. The first thing you need to do is have a call set up with the founder or director and ask them how much of runway do they have left. What runway means is that how much of money do they have in their bank and what is their current burn rate? And if they keep burning that amount of money, how much number of years do they have before you spend up all the money? I did the same and the answer that I got was one year, which was super risky crash of cryptocurrency and everything is one thing and then US federal bank rising the interest rates uh, are another thing that's why you can see the dollar is getting stronger and stronger by the day because they are fighting inflation by increasing the interest rate which during the time of covid was around zero percent and exactly during these times in 2020 and 2021 this startup had raised money and this time was like the golden era of cryptocurrency. Every cryptocurrency startup was doing great. People were throwing money at cryptocurrencies and also because of low interest rate, it was very easy to get funding. So the funding that they had was gained during this time. So I did not know if they are going to keep getting the, that amount of funding or even half that amount of funding with that valuation in the future. When crypto is going down, inflation is there, recession is there and interest rates are like sky high. Second one was bad work life balance most of the time. This is true for most of the startups. But for me, it was even more true because I was going to be the only data engineer in the startup. So it's understandable that I might have to work 12, 14 hours a day. Third con is time zone difference. Now, great thing about remote jobs is that you can make a lot of money if you live in a country that has lower cost of living. But the worst thing about is there can be a very harsh time zone difference. If this offer was from UK, the time zone difference wouldn't have been that big of a deal, but it was from US. So there was a 12 hour time difference. That means their 11 AM is my 11 PM. I might need to connect with them multiple times to get my doubts sorted and to create whatever the product that I was building. That means pulling off night shifts very often no office and obviously because of no office you have less networking then the work was going to be super technical i would have to code all the time creating their backend system which was like now i like to code but if that's the only thing that i do all the time then it kind of gets boring for me so this was a big con as well and then was the future opportunities. Now this was kind of a toss because if the startup grew, then I would have a ton of future opportunities. If it did not, then I would be in trouble. So that was about the startup. Now let's talk about my Google offer. Uh, I'm just going to mention the pros and cons, obviously not what I was going to earn or anything because I'm not allowed to. So pros for obviously stability, future opportunities. Now when I talk about future opportunities, I'm not talking in terms of 
leaving google and then going somewhere else those kind of future opportunities are going to be there but google is my dream company and when i joined google i did not have any immediate plans to leave so future opportunities were also in a way that let's say if i want to work with youtube or i want to work with drive or i want to work with a different team in cloud then i would have that opportunity to do it i would have an opportunity to move in my different teams and learn different type of work so those kind of future opportunities were also great at google then the type of work exactly what i love it wasn't really all coding but it's also about working in cross functional team kind of like a data architect and designing different pipelines better work life balance compared to startup then office and that's why you would network with a lot of people smart people are going to be here at google as well and then stocks and learning then let's talk about cons less money now i don't mean less money in a way that google pays less google usually pays way above the market standard in any country and I, i'm really happy with the overall package that i'm being offered at google but it obviously was less money compared to what i was getting in startup because that was a us based package i was supposed to earn in india then there was no senior in the title uh for those of you who don't know i was a senior data engineer at zs now obviously it's very easy to earning the senior title in companies like zs compared to companies like google i would obviously have to let that go if i moved to google and then there was a lack of startup exposure as i mentioned the fast paced learning wearing different hats learning different things about vcs and funding that was not there obviously so after i listed out then these pros and cons i chose exactly seven important factors for me that would help me make decision and whoever scored most out of these seven i thought i would go with that offer and google definitely won i know a lot of people would just like to follow their gut feeling which was already telling me that i should join google because that was my dream company but i really didn't want to have that regret so i did all this and uh, captured this in my decision making process this was as i said one of the most of decisions that i have had to make in my career i had about a week of sleepless nights and the hardest part was actually calling the person that i was going to report to in the startup and then tell him that i will not be able to join now this was a very bad thing that i did from my part i accepted their offer and before the joining date i told them that i was not going to come they waited for me for my 2 months of notice period to be completed but right before joining date i told them no and nobody should do that please don't do that uh, to any company and when i was doing that i was also feeling super hesitant but it was all compensated well when uh, i joined google and found out what amazing team i have here and the great culture that people talk about at google that's all true so and, and obviously amazing perks as well if you enjoyed this video don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the channel have you had this type of tough decision before when you have one offer on one and second one on the other have you ever accepted an offer and then rejected it have you rejected an offer after going through the entire interview process let's talk about it whatever it is just let's talk about it in the comment section below if you have any questions or even suggestions for my next video drop them below i respond to each and every comment this is it from my side See you guys next time.